In the spring training of 77, he suffered the first in a series of injuries that would end his career. Rusty Stav and I stand out in right field, and Thor Rusty goes like this to me. He says, Mac, relax, man. He says, you're having a great spring training. He goes, you got a week left. He says, slow down, man. He says, let's, you know, just shag. You don't have to go and run to left field. You don't run to center field. Just relax and sit here. And all of a sudden, no sooner did he finish his speech to me, ball gets hit out to me, right? Well, I hit out to him because he's playing right field. And I'm going like this, hey, Rusty, you want it? He says, no, you can have it, kid. I ran off after it, played the old high school days, dove for it, right? Came down when I dove, I, I went like that. When I came, I went just like that. My knee gave out, and I went, oh, oh, dang. I looked around, here's Ralph talking to someone. I go, Phew. look for the trainer. He's over there talk, playing with another ball player, right? I'm going, good. I get up to Rusty, and I get the side of Rusty. I'm going, ah, oh, phew. Because I caught that one pretty good. I'm in high school days. He goes, forget that, Mark. What'd you do to your knee? And I went, I don't know, Rusty. It's going, whoosh, 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 inside. He goes, he hits me right in the back of the head and goes, he says, what did I just tell you? No more than a minute ago. He says, and there you are. I mean, he says, go see the trainer. I said, nah, Rusty, I mean, let me, uh, you know, work it out a little bit. Maybe it just, you know, a little hyperextension. You know, it might not be nothing drastic. Then all of a sudden, I'm running around. I'm going, I think it's drastic. I mean, I can actually feel it going, boom, you know, swelling up. So I went and saw him. College, I blew the college out, man. Rusty was, never lets me forget about it. He says, you know, if you only listen to me. I said, well, just look at it this way, Rusty. If you went after the ball like you were supposed to because you're the right fielder, that would have never happened. You know, reversed it on him. He goes, oh, you know, it was unbelievable. But that's, that's where it, it all started, right there. Because they said when I was throwing and when I landed the leg, I was landing it like this instead of straight on. So when I landed it like this, I, I opened up like that. You know, and I did, uh, it was unnatural. I mean, uh, I felt comfortable. I didn't know it. You know, we put, pulled some films from here to nowadays, and you could see it. The minute I came around, instead of coming straight like that, I would go boom, and it opened up, and it just took all, the, took all the stress on here. And so, I mean, it only lasted so long, and then finally that's when the arm just went, and then finally, I, I, you know, we just all looked at each other and said, hey, I think my arm's hurt. <laughs> you know, I'm not sure, but I mean, I can't. You know, I can't do nothing with it anymore. I mean, it's actually, to get it up to throw, to play catch, I had to, you know, whew, to throw it. Because it was, I was always in pain. But if I was smart, but see, I was so young at the time that I was afraid to say, you know, I think I'm hurt. And I don't blame it on anyone but myself. Because I could have been the man and said, hey, I'm hurt. I don't care what you guys say. I don't care, you know, what the press say. It's my body. I'm not dying for you people, you know? But yet I, I went and died. But Fidrich went down fighting. He spent most of the next four years in the minors trying to recover, periodically returning to the majors only to be disabled again. And yet he always kept a sense of humor. I'm sitting on the bench and I'm just watching everyone. And like everyone knows, I used to always be loud, you know? And I'm just sitting there observing. One day went by, the second day I'm observing. And then the third day, and you know, I'm just getting my feet wet on. I had a pitch like two days from now, and all of a sudden, I just, uh, hey, hey, come on, come on, man, you know, you know. And Brian Dedman just looks down, hey, it's about time you started talking, we always heard about you like that, you know, everyone on the face started laughing, I'm going, hey, he said, you know, oh, Jesus, he does talk. And then a week goes by, right, you know, I'm still going, all of a sudden, Brian Dedman, Jesus, you haven't shut up yet since the other day, you know, and it's just everyone cracked up again, I'm going, oh, wow. He spent two more years in Boston's minor league system, still trying to come back. But finally, in June of 83, the bird faced harsh reality. I know the writing's on the wall, man. I can look myself in the mirror and say, you know, you don't have it right now. So I get down there, he's sitting in the chair, and I, I'm just standing there. He goes, Mark, I don't know how to do this. I said, you don't have to do nothing. I said, I know I'm gone. I said, uh, he goes, well, uh, what do you want to do? You want to get released? I said, no, I want to retire. I got released from the Tigers. I'm going to retire this time. It's a different word. And he said, boy, you're taking it. I said, hey, I've seen it coming. You know, I mean, I, I'm not stupid. I've been hurt for the last six years. I'm lucky I hung on this long. And, you know, he says, you know, this is hard for a manager. And I'm going, yeah, I know how hard it is for a manager to release a guy. 
you know, but I'm retired, so you don't have to release me. <laughs> he said, I said, no, nah. I said, I think, uh, I think it's time the kid's out of the game. The game's great loss, but the fans still remember his shining season of 76, even though Fidrich is now far removed from the ball field. I just have to say, uh, I thank them for not ever forgetting me. I mean, they, they just never have, and I hope they never do. And I, I try to live up to my aspects, but I'm only human, and just like they're only human. And uh, it was a beautiful time, and I still love it because they still send me mail today. No money in pigs anymore. Canadians are flooding the market on us, poor farmers. It's like uh, a love, you know, and love is uh, different. They never dumped me yet, so uh, we're still in love, I guess, with the fans. I mean, to me, that's, that's beautiful. Thank the Lord that you got what you got and be thankful for what you have today, not, you know, what you, it should have been like, or if you could control it, you would have done this or done that, then it wouldn't be life. If you could control your life, it wouldn't be life. Life has got to be mystery. That's what, you know, life is all about. Mark Fitch, a rare bird whose spirit still sparkles. Now let's move on to the answer of this week's Nissan quiz. Dwight Gooden of the Mets is one of the pitchers who share the record of 32 strikeouts over two straight starts. Gooden did it as a rookie in 1984. All-time strikeout leader Nolan Ryan was with California in 1974 when he struck out 32 batters over two consecutive starts. And Luis Tiant was the third, setting down 32 over two for the Cleveland Indians in 1968. To go. Well, come on out to the ballpark and stick your nose into baseball's business, where sometimes big leaguers get stuck in their tracks. Careful now, you might get stuck. And talk about a sticky wicket. <laughs> Looks to me like there's a load of stick to itiveness in both of these sticky situations. Stick to your guns, man, and stick it out. Now, here's what baseball's all about sticking it and picking it, or at least trying. Still sticking? Well, it's been said that anything stuck can always be unstuck. That is, if you stick around long enough and stick to a sense of humor. After all, no reason to become an old stick in the mud. From stick to slick, grand and glorious glove work, courtesy of Major League Mitt Masters, starting off with a game-ending double play by the New York Mets. Wally Backman to Rafael Santana and on to Keith Hernandez. Angel Dick Schofield picks and rolls with a double dribble. Houston Astro Dickie Thon getting a good grab by Glenn Davis. The Astros again with Bill Doran doing the job. Tim Flannery, San Diego Padres. Baltimore's Juan Bonilla with the assistance of a sweet scoop by Eddie Murray. Cleveland Indian Tony Bernazar. Chicago Cub pitcher Dennis Eckersley doing it the hard way. Astro Mike Madden with an act of self-preservation. And Detroit's Larry Herndon with an act of self-sacrifice. Atlanta's Claudel Washington with a baseball ballet. New York Yankee Dave Winfield making his point. Cincinnati's Eric Davis with a skywalking routine. And finally, Kansas City's Willie Wilson over and out. Now, it's this week in baseball's 10th anniversary flashback. Brought to you by Gatorade. Let's flash back to 1984. One at bat almost made Mike Heath the head case. Playing for Oakland at Yankee Stadium, Heath lined a Phil Necro knuckler right up the middle. But second base was in the way, and Willie Randolph made the play thanks to a crazy ricochet. Anytime you can get a, you know, a line drive up the middle off of any of the Necros, you got to be happy. So I was 
I was like 0 for 20 at the time, and um, I just remember hitting a line drive up the middle, and I thought it was a base hit all the way, and it hit the bag and bounced to Willie. Willie was way in second base over there where he normally plays. Of course, when the ball went over my head, Willie took a couple steps to the right, just his natural reaction. The ball hit the bag, and Willie stopped dead in his tracks, and the ball came right to him. He caught it chest high, and true, he thought by 10 feet at, at first base. I don't know if you could do that five more million times in baseball. Not even that many that that, that, that would happen, but it, it just hit the core in the bag. He could absolutely could not believe it. I couldn't believe it. He started laughing. I started laughing. Well, Randolph started laughing. Man, you got a kick out of it. And that was it. It was over. But if I look back of all really freak plays that since I've been on the mountain, that certainly got to be one of them. Because I don't think that'll ever happen again in baseball. For Mike Heath, once was more than enough. Oh, well, that's all for this to me at least until the bell rings.